When I left Bratza in 2022, I felt pretty lost because I, the transition of, I had had this, this industry that I loved in specialty coffee and the company that I love, the team mm -hmm. that we had created, this incredible vision of taking care. And I felt like our team was truly a team. It wasn't yeah. just a group of people. It was a team that had a vision of what they wanted to do. They trusted each other. Uh, it was psychologically safe for them to come and disagree with anybody they wanted to disagree with. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward Friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and this is episode four of a five part series. Uh, with Kira Kennedy, we are talking about leading yourself and others. And Kira, there are people who are listening to this series that may be at any stage of their career or their business, and they're feeling like, I need to be a better leader. I need to start leading. But they don't feel that they're a natural leader or they don't feel like a leader at all. Either they've tried to lead and nobody follows in their mind because they think that that's what leading is. Or they're really just entering some kind of a position where they may be looking at how to lead. So they may be in a dysfunctional workplace and they may need to start stepping up and showing some leadership. What do you have to say to people who are not in their mind natural leaders but want to start leading? Well, it's a great question. And I guess, as I've said before, I've always been really fascinated by leadership, management, team building, community building, all of all mm. of the stuff that has to do with people creating a future. Mm. And I would say, you know, at Baratza, I started. I had managed people and I had worked in large companies and I don't know that I saw myself as a leader and, you know, I didn't see myself as a leader. I thought I was more an entrepreneur. I was beginning this company. Really? And I think it wasn't until probably... 2012, 2013, that I really started realizing um, that team building leadership, putting a name to what mm. I wanted to accomplish. And, and so I think studying leadership uh, was, and studying myself, figuring out what I cared mm. about, those two things were really important. When I left Bratza in 2022, I felt pretty lost because I, the transition of, I had had this, this industry that I loved in specialty coffee and the company that I love, the team mm -hmm. that we had created, this incredible vision of taking care. And I felt like our team was truly a team. It wasn't yeah. just a group of people. It was a team that had a vision of what they wanted to do. They trusted each other. Uh, it was psychologically safe for them to come and disagree with anybody they wanted to disagree with. Friends, World of Coffee Dubai is back in 2024 and I am proud to announce that the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward will be the official podcast partner for World of Coffee Dubai for the second year in a row. The Roasters Village will be a one-of-a-kind destination for all things coffee. As an exhibitor, introduce your artisanal roasts to an international audience and gain valuable insights from their perspective. Visitors, immerse yourself in the celebratory coffee culture experience by sampling exclusive cups 
poured with passion from cafes worldwide and absorb insights that will elevate your own appreciation of all things coffee. Whether you brew coffee or just love savoring a fine cup, this event gathers the global coffee community under one roof in an amazing city. Join us at World of Coffee Dubai in 2024 at Dubai World Trade Center from the 21st until the 23rd of January. Tickets are available at dubai.worldofcoffee.org or you can contact us on social media for any questions that you might have at mapforward.coffee. Get your tickets now, folks. Come see the podcast being recorded live and we hope to see you in January in Dubai for World of Coffee. Um, and it was just so incredible that to walk away, um, all of a sudden I didn't have that team around me and that team mm. had helped me grow and learn. And, and so how to create... But what I really found is leadership is, is almost a way of thinking. And I started noticing leadership everywhere I go. And you can walk into a company and see that there are divisions in the company. You might not, you might say, oh, this company isn't the kind of company I would want to work for. And then all of a sudden you'll find one department that is magical and mm -hmm. everybody in the department loves that department. And it's about, oh, it was somebody who yeah. created that department. And um, I I did a couple interviews or, or conversations um, for International Women's and it was uh, companies that were in industries I knew nothing about. And a couple of them were startup companies that were building batteries for electric cars. So, mm. I mean, and so how to have a conversation when I knew coffee. But what was really interesting is how often the conversation of, yeah, I have a PhD in this but I don't know anything about leadership, management, care. And when you start talking about how do I be a, a leader, mm. the beginning is what would you want? You have 20 people working for you. What do you want to happen with that? Where are you going? What are you creating? Um, and I think it's so interesting that um, or you're on this executive board and you don't necessarily agree with a lot of the things that are happening. What is the best way for you to change that? That's kind of leadership. It's about, I'm going to bring my principles and my values and my vision of a future. And I'm going to talk about those with intention. And again, that can sound, we use the word naive because you might not, you might fail. Um, you might be working for a company that that's not going to work. And mm. you learn that. And you get to make decisions. You're learning about how to have conversations, how to hopefully have meaningful conversations that are going to make a difference. That takes courage. That takes bravery. That takes learning. And you might end up leaving. But the important thing is that it's step by step. It's leadership is watching, seeing people that you don't want to lead like them, seeing people that you would love that are inspiring to you and you see possibilities of how you could be that person. I don't know. What, tell I me. I think it's, go, go ahead. On. Well, I, nope. I want to I wanna ask on that. When you first start recognizing that you're a leader, you're going to mess up. You're going to get things wrong. Right? Like, and everybody does it constantly. We're constantly second guessing ourselves as well. What do you have to say about the doubt that comes with learning how to lead? And the mistakes that come with learning how to lead. 
Well, I I think that comes back for me is that you have to you have to do that inside job. Wow. I, I hate to keep coming back to that, but it's not the learning to lead that will cause failures and judgment and sabotaging. Mm -hmm. It is life that does that. So we all throughout our lives are, are, um, are making mistakes. They might not even be mistakes. It could be uh, what's happening What's happening today in our supply chain is different than it was 10 years ago when I designed my company and all of a sudden I'm caught in a situation where if that supply chain problem wasn't a problem, my company would be wonderfully successful. And mm. um, so it's not just I made a mistake, it's that our world is constantly changing the people we're dealing with are constantly changing. And so what you really need to do is be able to trust yourself to, like I, I, I think I said this before, show up, be present, dance with the situation. And even when I look back at Bratza, sometimes I think, wow, what would Bratza be like today? And it's easy for me to think, oh, it would be exactly the same way it was in 2020 when mm. we sold it. Well, no, it wouldn't be. The world has gone through COVID. It's gone through supply chain. There is incredibly different competition in who is building coffee grinders, uh, the way things are being marketed. The way Baratza went to market was completely different than the way people are going to market today. Mm -hmm. um, so to say, oh, it would just be successful because I'm a great leader and because I know, uh, that's not true. It's a whole different world today than it was before. And would Baratza be able to be the caring company it was? Well, I hope so, but I... I think we would have to do a different dance mm. now than we did in 2020. So leadership isn't a thing you get to. It's like, are you a good parent? You're changing all the time. Are you a good leader? You're changing all the time. Are you a good podcaster? I'm sure you have to be a different podcaster with each guest you have coming mm. on. And sometimes you go, oh, that was a disaster, partly because the dance didn't work. Mm. So I think leading for me is just uh, a part of, I think we all have to be leaders because you are leaders in how you connect with people. You, I go out to lunch with somebody that's new to me and I walk in with an idea of how I would like that to go. And I do the dance, and at the end of it, you go, that was great, or did it? I don't right. want to do that again, or I want to retry because I think there's something there that I really want to, to get to know this person. That's just living life. And mm -hmm. I think uh, if we live our lives with intentional leadership, leadership of self, leadership of family, leadership of our friendships, leadership of our companies, they all require us to understand that we are creating the life, the future we want to be living in. Mm. And if that's not what we're doing, we probably are just letting the current of the culture take us wherever it's taking us. And so the beginning is to start to say, what is it I want my future to be like? And, and then to take that care and that goal into every conversation, every event, everything you do.
It sounds kind of exhausting, but I think it when is. I do it, I think it's very fun. <laughs> yes. Well. I mean, we practiced at it, right? Like uh, after so long, it, it, and that's what I was saying in the last episode, being in the pocket of the discomfort becomes the place that you want to be when doing hard things has been something that's a practiced experience for you. But being at the beginning of your journey as a leader was as uncomfortable as uncomfortable can be and you wriggle your way out of it. And I can I can only imagine what it's like today with the culture being the way that the culture is where people are learning how to assess information in a different way what do I believe how do I and that's a really great example of learning to lead yourself deciding for yourself what is your truth rather than being told what your truth is just that shift in mindset there is a really wonderful place to start learning how to be a leader. That was how I started learning how to be a leader. About 20 odd years ago, I decided I was going to throw away everything I believed in and create a new baseline. And, you know, I see that happening more and more and more today where people are challenging the status quo of what establishment really is and what government really means and what information is true and what roles our different leaders in inverted commas play in our lives and this is what I think is the hard hard work you know I had a I've been having conversations with a lot of young people who are just starting their careers and Uh and I think we are moving away that we're we're in a transition away from kind of the industrialized yeah. world into what's coming next mm. and i always think of uh it's easy i'm sure when you're in your 20s you're looking around blaming the world that it's changing and the jobs mm. are different and all this stuff is happening and I've been having conversations about AI and how many people are are really afraid of AI. And mm-hmm. I go, have you have you gone in and changed and played around with it? And I was scared of it. And then I started playing around with it. And what I've come to realize is the humanness of each of us is what we bring mm. and is valuable. And that if you are bringing your humanness, your compassion, your empathy, your way of looking at the world, the ability to see the different perspectives, the ability to, to connect with human beings and do that dance, if you are good at that, you will be successful and you will find Work. ways to be successful. But if what you're looking for is something where you don't have to learn, you don't have to dance, you don't have to be uncomfortable, you don't have to be fail, you don't have to be afraid, that's going to be difficult mm-hmm. because a computer can do that. And so in some ways you can say, well, but I I was promised when I was going through school that all I really needed to do is pass this test or fill in this multiple child. Well, the world changed. It did. And all of a sudden you are going to have to take responsibility for that life you would like to produce. And the more you are willing to be that leader of your life or that connector with people or that human being that understands care, I I think that is what what we're moving into. Mm -hmm. And um, 
Unfortunately, we've had a culture that has taught us not to show those weaknesses, that humanness, that connection, that conversation, those uncomfortable places. And so a lot of people are are scared and probably should be. And what's exciting is I think life, when you're on that edge, you're more alive. You're more learning, you're more growing, you're more thriving. That's my opinion, obviously, but it's uncomfortable Mm -hmm. and it's exhausting. And sometimes you just have to go, I'm done today. I have, but being at that learning edge, that growing edge, that connection edge, that failing where there is a chance where you're going to fail. And what is failing? I think failing, we think failing is an awful thing, but failing is how we learn. I fail a million times every day, every day. And I'm grateful for it. So I think, yeah, this is, this conversation has wound around us. We have thought about what we're really meaning, but I think it's it's a transition in our world that has so many different layers that are mm-hmm. going on right now that it's scary and it's exciting and there's a lot of opportunity for solving problems it's a very exciting time um, but it is going to force people to see the parts of themselves that they perhaps don't want to see which is not necessarily like I'm a big fan of that behavior. Go and see all the parts of you that you don't want to see. I promise that's where the growth is. I promise that's where the success comes from. Walking through those shadows is where the big success comes from. You won't believe it when you're in the middle of it. Kira and I can both attest to that. <laughs> but find yourself a Kira Kennedy. Trust me, when you have a Kira Kennedy and you are walking through those really dark forests, having a Kira Kennedy that says, you got this, yeah. it makes all the difference. We have one episode to go, folks. Um, and in this next episode, we're going to be talking about how we can challenge our leadership styles to keep moving forward and and how beautifully you set it up. I hadn't even been thinking about AI when um, I was pondering how we're going to approach this. Um, but given that AI feels like my new boyfriend, given how much I have conversations with it about business, <laughs> it's a perfect way for us to end this series. So join us in the next episode, folks. Peace, love and peanut butter. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks friends. If you enjoyed this video, here's what you should check out next. Consider supporting Mapper Forward on Patreon and be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell before you leave.